In our last video, we looked at uh, some of the theory behind the inference of two proportions. So now what I want to do is I want to look at one or two examples and exactly how you would use that theory to, uh, uh, to calculate hypothesis testing and uh, confidence intervals of the difference of two proportions. So let's, uh, let's just jump right in. Question is, would being part of a support group that meets regularly help people who are wearing the nicotine patch actually quit smoking? The county health department tries an experiment using several hundred volunteers who are planning to use the patch to help them quit smoking. The subjects were randomly divided into two groups. People in group one were given the patch and attended a weekly discussion meeting with counselors and others trying to quit. People in group two also used the patch but did not participate in the counseling groups. After six months, 46 of the 143 smokers in group one and 30 of the 151 smokers in group two had successfully stopped smoking. Do these results suggest that such support groups could be an effective way to help people stop smoking? All right, so first off, before we start playing the game, we got to make sure that we meet the requirements to play the game, okay? So, what are our three conditions that we have to meet? Randomization, independence, and the normal model, okay? So first off, randomization. Uh, the subjects were randomly divided. Okay, that's, uh, there, there you go, okay? We got our people and uh, uh, we, we randomly assigned them to group one and group two. Good. Uh, independence. Uh, we have, let's see, we took uh, 143 smokers in group one and 151 smokers in group two. So that gives us a total of 194 smokers. Uh, I'm sorry to say that that is far less than 10% of uh, the population of smokers in the world. So, well, we do have independence, okay? So uh, our second uh, uh, condition is met. And now the third condition. Okay, so for the third condition, uh, I, I, I wanted to check and see if uh, P1 times N1 is at least 10. P1 times Q1 is at least 10. Now, I don't know what P1 and P2 and Q1 and Q2 are, so what I have to do is I have to just use the actual number of successes and failures, okay? So, uh, as I look at this, I see from, uh, from group one, uh, I have 46 successes and uh, 143 minus 46 looks like 97 failures. And out of group two, I have uh, 30 successes. And uh, 151. Nope. I'm sorry. That's total. Uh, that's the total uh, sample size. So uh, 121 failures. Okay. 46, 97, 30, 121. All numbers bigger than 10. Therefore, the normal model applies. Okay. So we've met our conditions. So now what we need to do is we need to, uh, well, shoot, first off, we have to calculate our p-hats. So what is p-hat 1? p-hat 1 is, uh, I've got 46 out of 143. That looks like uh, 0.3217, 0.3217. And uh, p-2-hat is uh, 30 out of uh, 151, and that gives me 0 0.1987, 0 0.1987, okay? All right, so uh, it says, do these results suggest that such support groups could be an effective way to help people stop smoking? Do they suggest that? Remember, whenever you see uh, a question phrase like this, that means this thing here is your alternative hypothesis, okay? So the null hypothesis is going to be that P1 equals P2, okay? Uh, P1 being the, uh, uh, the, the proportion of people who get the counseling 
who are able to quit smoking. Okay? And P2 is the proportion of people who don't get the counseling who are able to quit smoking. Okay? And so what null hypothesis says is the counseling doesn't help. Counseling doesn't do anything at all. That those are exactly the same proportion. And the alternative hypothesis says no, P1 is actually greater than P2. Okay? All right. So uh, according to the null hypothesis, uh, that means that the expected value of P1 hat minus P2 hat would be zero. And the standard deviation of P1 hat minus P2 hat would be, all right, let's think about this. Uh, according to the null hypothesis, uh, these two groups are basically exactly the same, okay? The fact that group one is getting counseling doesn't do anything at all. So the null hypothesis says, okay, you had uh, 294 smokers. I did that right, right? 143 plus 151 is 294, okay? And uh, that you had 46 plus 30 of them successfully quit smoking. And so, therefore, the best estimate of P hat that I could get would be to divide uh, 76 into 294 and get a P hat of 0.2585. So that is going to be my... And the term for this is my pooled P hat. It's my pooled P hat. I'm taking the two groups and I'm throwing them in the same pool and saying, you really have no uh, essential differences here. I'm just going to count you all as the exact same thing. Okay? So, the standard deviation, and actually, let's be, let's call this the standard error because that's what we're actually calculating here. The standard error of P1 hat minus P2 hat is going to be the square root of uh, P hat, 0.2585 times q hat, 0.7415, and all I'm doing is just subtracting 1 minus that number, times 1 over uh, n1, 143, plus 1 over uh, n2, 151. Okay? And uh, so let's just go ahead and calculate that real fast. I get... Uh, well, here, let me just pull it up here. Um, point two five eight five times point seven four one five times one over one forty three plus one over one fifty one gets me that value, and that's the variance. So let me take the square root of that, and I get point zero five one four. Okay, so this is approximately 0 .0514. Uh, that is the standard error of uh, of my of my difference in uh, sample proportions. Okay, um, well, so what do I see? I see that I got uh, what what is the difference that I got? Aha, that's something that I need to calculate here. Uh, my P1 hat minus P2 hat, this is actually my, the statistic I'm interested in calculating, is uh, 0.3217 minus 0.1987, and I get 0 0.123. 0.123. Okay, so what do I have? My null hypothesis tells me that there is a normal distribution that is centered around zero and that has a standard deviation of 0 0.0514 okay and I take a sample and my sample magically ends up being way out here okay 0.123 more than two standard deviations away from uh, away from the mean Hmm. So what is the likelihood that I would get 
something this far out or further out? Well, let's see. Uh, again, I resort to my calculator. I'm going to check out the normal CDF. I'm going to say, what's the likelihood of my getting something from 0.123 out to, uh, I don't know, 10 or something huge like that? Uh, given that my mean is zero and my standard deviation is point uh, zero five one four, and that tells me that the probability is point zero zero eight three five. Okay, so the probability of this happening is about point eight three, actually point eight three six. Okay, percent less than 1%. That's the probability of getting something this extreme. And of course we call this the p-value. Alright? Now, many of y'all I'm sure are thinking to yourselves right now, why did he go to that trouble? Why didn't he just take his calculator and say, uh, let me go to stat, tests, uh, two proportion z-test, and just enter in I got 46 successes out of uh, 143 smokers in group 1. I got 30 successes out of 151 smokers in group 2. My alternative hypothesis is that P1 is greater than P2, so I stick with that one right there, and then calculate it. And, uh, alright, I rounded a little bit in my calculations, but you see, you still get a p-value of 0.008 which is the same thing that I got. And uh, this Z here, this is the Z score. So what that tells me is, this is 2.4 standard deviations above the mean. And we know from experience that in a normal model, 2.4 standard deviations above the mean is way up there. That's really high. Okay? There are my two P hats. There's my pooled P. And uh, my two uh, sample sizes. So, what is the conclusion we come to? The conclusion we come to is, uh, yes, Okay, that the, the null hypothesis is that uh, there is no difference between proportion 1 proportion 2, and I see that my p-value is very low. Uh, all right, now, truth be told, I kind of cheated here. I should have declared a significance level beforehand. I should have declared what my alpha was beforehand. Um, I'll just do it now. I'll say, I'm going to test this at a 1% level of significance, okay? So my alpha is going to be uh, 1%, okay? Because the p-value is less than alpha, because it's just, uh, it, it's, it's even uh, more unlikely than 1%, I reject the null hypothesis, and I find that there is evidence that such support groups are an effective way to help people stop smoking. Okay? So now the question is, well, uh, how much does it help? Okay? So let's get, let's get an estimate of P1 hat minus P2 hat. And actually we already have that estimate. It's right there. It's that 0.123. But if I were making a confidence interval, um, what, would, uh, what would that interval look like? Well, uh, it's going to be 0.123, this is my, let's make it a 95% confidence interval, okay? It's going to be 0.123 plus or minus 95% uh, confidence interval with a, 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 a Z interval is 1.96 is our critical value. And that's going to be times the square root of, and this time I can't use the pooled values, okay? This time, I have to use the, uh, uh, the original values, so uh, my, my original P hats, P1, P1 hat and P2 hat. So this is going to be 0 0.3217 times 0 0.6783 over uh, 143 plus uh, 0 0.1987 times 0 0.8013 over 151 and that comes out to 0.123 plus or minus all right let me see what I get here uh, there's a lot of arithmetic to do um, 
0.3217 times 0.6783 over 143 plus 0.1987 times 0.8013 divided by 151 uh, gets me that. And when I take the square root of that, I get uh, 0 0.05079. And when I multiply that times my critical value 1.96, I get a margin of error of 0 0.0995, so basically 1%. Okay? So my margin of error is uh, point, um, I'm sorry, that is not 1%. That is uh, 10%. Okay? It is 9.956%. So yes, 0 0.01. Okay? And uh, so that's going to be from point one one three to point um, one three three. Okay. So my uh, uh, my ninety five percent confidence interval tells me that this is going to be. Uh, good lord! I'm sorry. I messed this up again. Ah. Okay. This is point one two three. Plus or minus, I said 10% and then I wrote 1%. Uh, plus or minus 0 0.100. So it goes from uh, 0 0.023 to 0.223. That looks more like it, okay? So I say that there is, I am 95% confident that the uh, difference in proportions of... Uh, of of uh, quitting smoking uh, is between 2% and 22%. So if you go to this counseling group, if you're already taking the patch, and then you uh, supplement with the counseling group, you are between 2 and 22% more likely to be able to quit smoking. Not bad at all. Okay. Uh, in the next video, we're going to do uh, one more example. Uh, but I hope this, uh, this gave you a good idea of how to apply uh, the uh, lessons we learned in uh, inference of two proportions.